Okay, all week we've been working on lacing and truing these WLC wheels. And today, Mr. Tatro is going to mount the tires. 17 inch rim strap or 18, 19 inch rim strap? Well, they're 18 inch rims. So pick what you like. That's why I got both. These are Coker tires. I'm not too sure we're happy with the quality of them. That you get. It's all you can get. There's the dog. He's in charge. The paint's good and dry. We cooked that last night. It appears that the 18, 19 inch rim strap is the one that's going to work. With the hole out. Appears you missed it. You're going to put duct tape on top of that? Not even if you wanted to. No, okay. I didn't think so. I'm just asking. Well, I am going to center it between the rim here. Slide right. Okay, so we're not going to use the 17s. We're going to use the 1819. Where's the other one? Yeah, it's perfect. See on the camera? Yeah, I know it came out good. All in the lips, nice, all down in there. Got that all sealed up. Glad I listened to you. Why? Because it came out perfect. Perfect. Look at that, it's perfect. Tubes are uh, the mm -hmm. behind you, aren't they? Zero. Tubes are up in there. Oops. First inspector right there. Good. Are these good? Good to use them? This one's used because somebody lost the thing off of it. And I did not bring the cap, but I'll bring them. You're supposed to come with some real military. Yeah, I know. And I've got, got a couple. Now, are these going to fit inside of here? You know what the answer to that question was? No, I, I, <laughs> as you ask more questions, more of them pop up. The answer was no, it does not fit. So, you know why these don't fit? Because they're Indian rims. Because they're not made to have rubber stemmed rims, they're made to have the new style rims in there, which is this metal. So, what do you want to do? Well, we got to drill them. Got to drill them? We got to, you got a step drill. That's going to take the paint off, we got to repaint. No. Bring a little brush paint with you? I did not, but I can touch that up. You can touch it up after I put it together? Wow. No. What size is up? I imagine that's a half inch or better. Half inch or better. So you're in charge of those? I'm in charge of these.
I'll be back. What was that comment? When you're building show quality equipment, everything is handmade. Yeah, we found out the hole in the rim is not big enough to accommodate the new tube. You gotta remember this is Indian brown, so. Right, but still. <laughs> Looks like we're about 456 is our diameter. Which would obviously squeeze down to about 430. I get I guessed half inch. That would be five zero, wouldn't it? That'd be generous on the size, yes. Okay. So you go over your chart and you find a half inch right there. And you start looking at big numbers dropping off. So seven sixteenths is four forty or more or less. Okay. Which is a good place to to use, I think. We can work our way up to a bigger size. Here comes the DeWalt. Reamers right here to choose from. Uh, let's see, I probably should get rid of this. Because it'll wind it up. Most likely. That's a lot smaller than. It's probably like three eighths of an inch. No, not even that. It's bigger than five sixteenths. So we got a lot of reaming to do. Now reamers you can only take a little at a time. Okay. But they don't dig in like a drill would. Which I like that fact. You want to do them both at the same time? That's exactly what I was going to do. I'm just asking. I'll put down a wheel cock. Real chalk, gotcha. Like my wheel cock there. Hey, dumbass. <clears throat> Helps to go the right direction. Boy, that's a beautiful tool. Yeah, it works when you use it right. Running it backwards probably didn't help the sharpness any. Uh, we usually skip a, skip a couple sides at a time. Size we going up to? Four seven five, he said. It's getting bigger. This would be like 450, it's one side of the boat. That's getting pretty big. Harleys are a lot bigger. So what happens if you get these inferior quality tubes you bring in here? Well, we were discussing that earlier. All you got's coker. They're the only kids on the block. No, that's the only ones you got. You bought from Coker. I have other tubes in stock. Well, you didn't say. You can ask. Oh, Jesus. Here we go again. This is deburring. I sure wish you'd tell me when you got the stuff. I told you I'm a big proponent of shopping local. 
but I don't like selling my stuff. Especially oh, all right. Well, then I don't know what you're mentioning it for. Especially people like you. Oh, well, that's fine, too. I've been, I've been shunned before. <laughs> How are you gonna deburr that? And that's a good question. Like that? That's how you do it. Wow, look at that. Give me a drop of dough. You get the idea. You like that? Yeah, I do. I didn't think I could do that. You're a man of many talents. See what he's doing there? He's going up through this. You have to run it backwards. Why don't you hold your hand there so I don't drop it again? That didn't work very good. I still got a burr under there. Alright, so let's use a different tool. One of those. The burring tool. The burring tool. Better. See, it knocks the burr off. Oh yeah. It has a radius cutter on there. Yeah. So you don't have a problem. Oh, nice. Okay. Now we got to put some paint on there. You can hold that one. And did you bring the right color paint today? Well, we got the same. Or yeah, I got the this khaki. Okay, good. We'll use the one that's used. The original color. Okay. So you don't lose them. Gotcha. Walk in the middle machine. Oops. Somebody's got that up too high. Okay, where's the paintbrush I gave you? Did not hand one over. Okay. Paintbrush. Now, what color did you want to use? Your khaki stuff. Where's okay. Uh, let me be right back. Let's go up front. I did. Supposed to be filming what you're looking at. It's yeah, all junk paint. It's not junk paint. It's all good paint. Let's see. This is light. We'll work you. Red oxide. Early. Yes, that's it. Lusterless khaki. That's it. There's some left too. That's a good sign. What color is this going to give us? That color right there. That's still on the floor, that's the cap. Oh, I think so. This Rapco is pretty nice. They put two caps in there.
the right color? Mm -hmm. I think so. That's going to dry the same? I think so. You do a lot of thinking, don't you? I'm a stark in here, I can't see. Did I do that right? That's what's nice about that khaki. It's real forgiving. Oh, good. So even if I do it, it won't be bad? Oh, it'll be perfect. It'll be perfect? Almost like you did it? Yeah. Look at that. Ah, very nice. You can see the difference in it there. Well, it's going to dry to lusterless, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Probably should have soft the tube fit in there first, but yeah, it's all right. We believe it. It'll fit. I should put these back in the oven and bake it on again, but <laughs> I'm going to skip that secondary process. Oh, noise. Know who's looking for me? Got no friends. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. Did I do a correct job on that? Yeah, I like it. Maybe got some extra paint. You want okay. some extra? I don't know where you scratched anything up. I think we're good. Well, I know I got some scratches someplace. We'll, we'll do that later. Okay. Look at that. She had a lot less than a brush. Now I'm going to have to go cut this with some brake clean and get it off my brush. Okay. Otherwise we'll have a junk brush. This Where can you buy an new, acid brush? This is a brand new one. Well, I gotcha. It's hard to come by. Where do you get them? I don't know. Welder supply. I got them out of that drawer over there. Oh, alright. Alright, let's go and do some more work now. Just charge you five bucks for the brush. You can do that. Me. You can do that. Okay, we'll get back to doing real work. I'm on the ground. Remember where we left off? Uh, we're back. We're going to see if the tubes fit now the rims. strap is the next problem. You should be able to stretch those enough though. Yeah, but it was not letting it go all the way through. So it'll it'll work its way through. Alright. It'll work. Good enough for you, right? Uh. Okay, I need a tire. Is, are these tires directional? I don't know. They don't, to me, appear to be. You're the coker guy. No, I'm not a coker guy. You yeah. found... Look at that white snot in there. That's talc. Call what you want. That's mold release. All right. Let's see. There's a dot. It says tubeless. Oh, tube tight. 
That's close to two foot. Let's see, you're supposed to run uh, 31.5 kilograms at 32 PSI. How many kilograms you got to have on your bike? Uh, just me. Just you, huh? Yeah, I don't think I equate to a couple quick kilograms. A couple of kilograms? That's a hun couple of hundred pounds, huh? <laughs> well, that's 700 pounds in England. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not that big. Uh, you got all these metric things on there. It appears that it doesn't matter how it goes on because it doesn't say anything. The tread looks like it looks the same all the way around. Okay, so we have to get some lubricant on the thing so we can bolt together. I'll use my CRC that I use for everything else around here. You could also use hot soapy water if you want it. Or cold if you want it. Okay. We're almost done. Well Somebody forgot the tire tools. That'd be a hammer. Couple of these. You put your put my foot on the back of the rim so this will go on. Okay, where's our mark for our silver mark? There's our dot. See, hammers work good for lots of things. Okay, you put that dot right there. That's usually what those dots are for, but we don't know for sure in this application. I want to make sure this goes through that hole. It barely goes through that hole. It doesn't go through the rim strip. Same problem the tube has. What do you call that little gadget? That's something you made up? I've never seen one before. Call it dick puller. Well, I can see what it does. That's a great thing. It's just a tire tool. I always like testing them before I put them on. Mm, looks pretty good. Nope. You don't appear to be. Got an imperfection like your tire does, I wouldn't put it in. Okay, so after you blow them up, you let some air out. And that's enough. Then, go ahead and put that on. And you stick this in here without, without folding it. So go just flat, straight. Put that in without scratching the rim up, hopefully. So you can just pull this thing through. Like that. You take your tube, fold it in half like that, shove it in, when it, once it goes in, it flattens back out. You don't want no folds in it too. When you put it in, you want it to be in there nice and flat. Those tires are nice and tall profile, aren't they? Yeah, they're 450s. Yeah, they're going to look great. Okay. Then I go ahead and put air in there just to make sure everything's good. The tube should be laying in there nice and flat with no, no folds or anything in it. You have to look how it pushes the tire up evenly all the right. way down. You want to see that too. Twice. 
just to make sure. This thing won't fall out, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook this back up. Yeah. Now you don't want to start <clears throat> right here because you push, you can cut the tube off. Cut the bell stem off there. So you push the tire all the way over this direction here. See how I'm pushing it? Get your leg in there like that. And go ahead and start working this around. The tire has a spoon to it effect, so right. you use this side here to hook around the rim. Just use your other knee to hold it. You want to make sure the tube does not get stuck in here as you're doing this. I lift up on the tube and I shove it in so I don't scrape the rim. Make sure the tube's out of the way. You can actually grab the tube right there a little bit so I just stop. So make sure the tube's not mm -hmm. in here. so slick it's popping up. So you make sure the tube's not inside the tire bead over here. If it's not in there you should be alright. It should be staying down but it's not wanting to. It's wanting to slide up. See it's so slimy it's sliding up. Mm -hmm. Hold up. Popped up on the bead on the mm -hmm. other side, and you heard it pop a little bit. More. Mm -hmm. The problem with this is I'm probably scratch it too little bit. I got to trim. Damn it. Okay, pull it up. Okay. Like that, make sure the tube's not in there anywhere it belongs, it doesn't belong. Put some air in there. See that lip right there? Yeah. Make sure it's all the way around the whole rim's like okay. that. Okay. That means it's beat It's all. centered, yeah. That means it's all the way up where it belongs. As you blow them up twice, once again, just let the tube kind of center there inside of it. Bleeds all the pressure out again. This tire is so tall, the tube keeps disappearing. I like them.
I'm glad you steered me that way. That was pretty neat. Is that the same tire as the guy had on that other bike? Well, that's what the restoration guys are using. The quality's not that good for running down the road on it, but it did look nice. Okay, we've got 30 pounds in there. Do the spit test. Put some spit over the stem hole. <clears throat> See how there's no bubble? Mm-hmm. It's leaking there to be a bubble. And you blow the spit off. Wipe off any excess. And then you got your little core here for you. Nice so job. Proper black rubber on here instead of stupid uh, modern style chrome stem sticking through. God, those are great. Yeah, but these should be OD greener. What, the tires? No, I like them. So we baked that paint on, so even though I scraped it in one spot. No, I don't think we bothered it any. There's no Man, are those nice. God, that's a nicer looking wheel than a 516, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Tall, nice, like a blade. We got good contrast to the stainless oh, steel. Oh, man. Else. A little more show than just having black spokes. Black is stock. And the different colors here look good too. They, they offset each other real nice. Yeah. Because nothing on the Harley's all one color. That's the rear wheel. Nice. Could be front or rear. Doesn't matter. They both had the same offset. So that's what they look like. So this has to be balanced now. That'll be another thing to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other wheel. See if we can screw it up too. We did such a good job of screwing up the first one. Try this one. Where's the other tire behind you there? Wow, those are nice. You can you want to blow all the crap out of here? There's a piece of rubber in there. So these tires are so big and on the depth, they don't like blowing stuff out again. So, you know, oh, yeah, rubber. crap in there, sure. I could put a hole in the tube eventually. Okay, get all that out. Same day we lubricate it again. There's a dot, see? So we'll put that in there. Is there a there. dot on each side? No, one side. You usually only do it on one spot. Okay. That's actually the, the light part of the tire. So when you put the stem over there, the weight of that stem is going to be offset slightly. Oh, I got you. Tire weight. What's up, Skinny? Come back to help again. Where's your pink dot? There it is, way over there. So we got the pink dot go right there. Hold the rim with my toe. Look at that. One shot. You've done that a time or two. Scooby was helping me there. Good job. Yeah. That's a, That's a trick the old tire guys Look use. Those. Look at those big claws. That's a trick the old tire guys use. <laughs> Brute force. That was sweet. You like that? Yeah. I need that. Okay, any imperfections in that one? No, I think that? so. She's holding. So it's not just holding, you gotta make sure there's no slits or separations or anything that looks goofy. Get that in there? Yeah. Rubber balls. That's not good. So that can eat up the tire inside and put a hole in it with a tube. It's not gonna come out there either. How about that? You like that? You don't like that. You didn't like that, did you? All right. So what's this thing again? Uh, the uh, uh, spout puller. Spout puller. I don't know what you call that. That's a, this here's a stem. Stem puller. There you go. I learned that in stem cell research. There you go.
tricky getting in there too. So, we fold around, fold the tube, put it in like that. Go a few inches each way. And stick that in there without scratching anything. Now you notice I got the highest part of the hubs up. Right. So it's mm -hmm. more flat. I don't have to fight it. Center it up there. Okay, first centering. This does it blows up too. If it, you can hear the tube, unwrap yeah, itself. unwrapping. This one is pretty good. Let the air out. You should lose that. Okay. Don't break the bead. Got no tire squeak to move. You want to explain what you're doing by when you say that? What? The rim, the bead of the tire's got to go up in the valley of the... That's why you have a drop center. Right. They've got to go in the valley of the wheel. Yeah, the tube tire goes in there, so, it, so the, um, it's like having a smaller down or rim. Right, right. So it'll go on there better. Right. Otherwise, you'd be fighting it. Otherwise, you got to stretch the tire. That's correct, and they don't want to stretch. Not easily. Especially when it's a cool day. You can see how the rim kind of goes that way. Yeah. It centers in. That's what you want to be seeing also. See how the tube's getting wrapped there by my car. Here we go pop when I pulled it up there. Mm -hmm. That was the lower part. This, you know, I'm keeping this one in the rim and this one over here. Everything's so slippery here. It's, You're it's, working it around. Gotcha. It's coming up. Well, it'll unwrap itself. You just keep going in a circle if you're not careful. Yeah. And so when you get to this point here, you can just get it with a hammer. See how it wraps around? Yeah. Right? Go right in. You jammed your wrench in there, you can strap your rim right there. Okay. Make sure there's no tube anywhere that shouldn't be. Where'd our dot go? We lost our dot. The dot was on this side. The dot disappeared. It did, didn't it? I don't think it moved much. It didn't move hardly anything, but the dot used to be there. Looked like a chalk mark, anyways. Whatever it was, it's, it's no longer there. There, let's center. I go slowly so it gives it time to move around a little bit. I already felt the lower bead pop in already. That bead to make sure it's all the way up, all the way around. This side looks good. Watch it all the way around like it wants to. It went in with about 22 pounds of pressure. I went up to 30 there. So we'll give it one more. Feel all the air blow up. Mm -hmm. Keep 
keep hearing air leaking through the smoke, so as you put air in there, that means you got a hole in the tube. Right. So even if you do blow it up, it won't hold air. stock pressure on these? It says 32. What did you say 32? You were reading it. You said it. Uh, I said the stock pressure. I didn't see what the tire pressure was. Oh. I don't know. What would it be? 30. Eight, 18 to 22 in a military oh, bike. Oh, okay. Remember, they run the dirt a lot. Right. This one, we don't have the valve stem for it. So you core cover. Now for more freeway driving, I understand we get more heat build up in the okay. tire. You can bump that up another three to four pounds more. Okay. Boy, bike, those are nice. On a solo bike, you don't need a lot of air in it. God, who would want chrome rims? You would. No, I wouldn't. Those are nice. Nicer than nice. Wow. Are you getting fired up to get wound up on yours? No, no. Don't scratch the rim against that right there. You pushed it over. No, you did. I know what I did. I know what I did. There they are, See folks. how the hub? See, the hub goes between the spots. Gotcha. Of the hub. <clears throat> I had it on a tire and you shoved it in. Then you All it right, across. okay. Then you put a big gash right across here. So All right, so okay. Stacking does make a difference. Okay. Yeah, so All right, pretty. Fix you up nice. Okay, next thing is we're going to do some balancing. Okay, balancing will be back. Yep.